Good evening from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for checking out our retrospective look into GBWC 2023. There's a few things we want to get off our chest about the competition for 2023 and I'm sure some of you would want to as well. But before we get there, a very big shout out and thank you to Choco Falcon aka Mr. David Liu, the GBWC champion of Singapore for providing us with all these awesome close-up high resolution shots of all the champions from their respective countries. For those of you who don't know, Mr. David Liu not only is the GBWC champion of Singapore, but he also provides special classes and commission builds. So do check him out. I'll provide a link to his YouTube page, IG page, and also Patreon as well in case you want to get in touch with Mr. Choco Falcon. So for more photos, go and check out his Facebook page. There are a lot of things that he has uploaded directly from Singapore itself. Now, let's get back to GBWC. In the past, you guys will know that we always cover all the individual countries GBWC and try to predict who will be the top three. And usually we will be 80-90% accurate in terms of our prediction because we knew the rules. The rules was basically in terms of story, finishing and painting. But with the very big reset of GBWC way back in 2022, for those of you who missed the video, do check it out. We already mentioned the rules of the game has changed. And it does seem like still a lot of builders have not caught up to the changes for GBWC. We are still seeing a lot of big gigantic builds being submitted, thinking that they will win. But no, nope, the game has changed. And let's talk about a little bit more about why that is. Obviously, the biggest reason is post-pandemic, after the lockdown, we no longer have a on-ground Japanese judge from Banai Hobi to look and review at all the entries that were submitted to qualify for the particular competition. Nowadays, everyone submits an entry online to Japan and all the entries are judged from Japan whether they are able to even participate in the contest, let alone be picked or selected as the winners for each individual category. In the past, we used to have Kawaguchi san, right? He will travel to every single country's competition and look at every individual entries, 360 front, back, left, right, and together with the help of the local ex GBWC champs and also the organizers to shortlist and qualify and you know pick out the winners rightfully so based on the three criteria but nowadays post pandemic since 2022 mr kawaguchi san has not been able to travel due to health reasons and unfortunately one of the impact is we no longer have somebody on ground to actually look at every individual entry carefully to see whether the paint job is really that good the build quality is really on par and were there any third party kits or you know off market kits that's been included into the build which sometimes to be very frank is going to be very very hard to judge online through the online photos that were submitted by all the participants now i'm not saying that the entries that were selected for gblc 2023 or even the winners that were selected is bad you know far from that but what we're saying is that having a local presence to actually review and look at all the entries to decide which entry are actually should be shortlisted for winning for representing their countries that would definitely help a lot more given the online chatter that we've been seeing so far especially on facebook i know a lot of you are dissatisfied with the winners that were selected for GBWC 2023. And there were also some, um, you know, issues, especially in Canada with the second place winner that were initially selected. Well, later on, they found out that, hey, the guy or girl who won the second place for Canada GBWC, they were using some off-market pass from Etsy and it was disqualified and the third place winner placed number two. What was interesting was they did not actually find someone else to replace the third position. So GBWC Canada only had a champion and a runner-up. There's no second runner-up, which was quite weird, okay? Now, coming back to Mr. Kawaguchi-san, right? I think when we were looking through the live ceremony award session, Mr. Kawaguchi-san was not there. Um, he had a video recording and he looked noticeably thinner from what we remember and what we encounter as well. So here is a very big hope you recover soon to Mr. Gawaguchi san and hope to see you in person in Malaysia and other GBWC across the world very, very soon. 
One interesting observation for GBWC 2023 was that the winners from Hong Kong and also Malaysia, the respective winners, they were all under the tutelage of professional Gunpla beaters. For Hong Kong, they had Henry Lam, ex-GWC champion of Hong Kong. And for Malaysia, the winners were also students of PG Hobby Art Studio. So I think that is going to be a trend to come and what we're going to be seeing in the near future, right? You're going to be seeing a lot more younger entry Gunpla builders who have not been in the hobby for very long, but they're able to create amazing works because they have a big school or slash very experienced master behind them to teach them how to actually build a great looking diorama with great finishing and also great paint job as well. I think that is probably going to be the trend moving forward, at least in Southeast Asia. Here's hoping that, you know, Mr. David Liu, aka Choco Falcon, will also have some students winning GWC Singapore in the near future as well. One of these other amazing, not amazing, but a funny insight that I saw was that for under 20 category, the European and also the Vietnam champions works was not actually showcased at the event floor itself, which was quite strange. So I'm wondering whether it was it because that the winners couldn't make their way to Japan to showcase their work, or was it that the work got damaged on the way in transport to Tokyo Base during the live award ceremony. So yeah, those were the only two works that we did not see photos of the entries because for Vietnam and also Europe for under the 20 categories, surprisingly, the works was missing from the show floor itself. Okay, so that is everything out of my chest. Let's talk about what we want Bandai to do for GBLC 2024. And I hope you guys can share your inputs as well. For me, I think my number one wish is to get a representative from Bandai Hobby Japan to be actually on the show floor to look at every single individual entry itself. If this is not possible, I think obviously it is very taxing for one person to cover every single GBWC across the world because traveling is just going to be crazy and it's going to be quite draining mentally and physically. So it can be Kawaguchi san or it can be somebody else representing Bandai Hobby to look at all the entries. My second wish list is to actually get the local ex GBWC champion to also look at and qualify the entries from the show floor itself because currently today i think every single entries that's been shortlisted chosen as winners it was all done without any input from the local ex champion which i think is kind of a waste definitely something that we want to improve to showcase who we think deserve to represent the best of the best and showcasing and representing the country in japan to win the big GBWC Champion Award, right? I think my third wish is not really more about GBWC entries or showcase, but it's really more of the limited edition items. So for me, at least for Malaysia and Singapore, I kind of wish that the events organizers can limit the amount of kits that every single person can buy during every single day. I think right now, most of the event organizers are limiting in terms of number of pre- sorry, not pre, limiting the number of limited event kits coming out every single day, right? So that will actually help us to really get our chance and buy those limited edition expo kits. But for now, those kits really just sell out way too quickly because there's just way too many people buying two or three, you know, with their friends and families. I, I think there should be a limit. Just like when you go to Gundam Base Yokohama itself, right? When you walk into Gundam Base Yokohama, you are told immediately you can only buy once per day. The moment you walk out the store, you're not allowed to come back again. And there's only a limit in terms of how many number per the same kit that you can buy every single trip. So I think that is a good way to limit the scalpers from scalping all the export kits and then seeing them on the marketplace marked up two to three hundred percent. Okay. What about you guys? You know, I would love to hear what you guys think about the improvements for GBWC. For me, number four, I would really hope that the organizers will improve the lighting for the cabinets when the kids are displayed. I think obviously for us who are filming videos and also photos during the event floor itself, 
it is extremely difficult to film when you have those lights that are of low quality and also low frequency giving us that very bad curtain blinds uh, effect when we're filming videos and photos. So hopefully that can be fixed because I do know that there's additional cost in ensuring the lights are of certain quality. Look at the cabinets that each individual winners from country representative are shown in Japan, right? I think they are shown in very high quality glass. It's white, very, very clean. You don't see a lot of fingers smudge just like what we see in typically a lot of GWC entries across the world. But so far, yeah, you know, it's looks to be the benchmark of what we hope that the other countries can look forward to as well. Now let's talk about the winning entries for the open category. If you look at the comments online, I believe a lot of folks were rooting for the American entry. The American entry, to be very frank, looks stunning and impressive, highly detailed, very technical build, very clean as well. Reminds me of the new Gundam build champion from Japan a couple of years back. But given the big reset, as I mentioned before, the judges are no longer looking at highly technical build, big dioramas, that is no longer the case, right? Judges are now looking for winning entries that presents a very cool idea that is supplemented with very good finishing build and also paint job. So I think there's something that a lot of builders would need to really get their head on and remember this when they are submitting their entries for GBLBC 2024. Having a highly technical build, very clean finishing paint job is not enough to win GBWC 2024 and also moving forward. If you're looking for a competition that will judge you based on how well you build and how well you paint your kids, well, I think that is going to be a competition called Tetsujin in Singapore. I think that Singapore competition is the one that you would want to look out for because that particular competition will be judging how the old rules of um, GBWC was, right? But the best thing is that they actually have a bigger open category other than just talking about Gundam as a whole. So I'm actually looking forward to covering Tesujin 2024 if I'm actually in Singapore then. So the event details, I'll put it down below as well in case you guys want to check out Tesujin in Singapore, okay? Now let's talk about the Gunpla releases in 2023. To be very frank, this year has been quite a big surprise for me because the Witch from Mercury series was a very big hype train. Everybody jumped on it and the kiss was selling so well. A lot of it was sold out in a lot of places. Until now, I'm still looking to get a Kali Barn and unable to do so. The full mechanics build of the aerial as well sold out everywhere. But now that the hype train has died down and having come back from Tokyo, we are seeing a lot of excess stock for all the secondary characters. The Sturm, Ganalova, the Lefrif, and also the Michaelis, the Farang. You are seeing all these kids in excess stock almost everywhere, online and also in most Gunpla retail stores. So that is unfortunate because the hype train came down fairly quickly and yeah, but to be very frank, all the secondary characters, mobile suit looks quite dull as well, at least for me, okay? So don't don't add me at the comment section below. But other than that, the Gundam Build Metaverse series that just came out also didn't really seem to be taking off as far as what we anticipated as well. There aren't really a lot of Master Grid release because Gundam, sorry, Bandai Hobby as a brand today is focusing a lot more on the figurized Kamen Rider, Ultraman, the 30 Minute Sisters as well. So it does look like the trend for this year, at least in 2023, there weren't really a lot of new Gunpla releases that caught our eyes or excitement for the older Gunpla releases. So let me know what you guys think, you know, are you guys buying a lot more Plamo kits other than just Gunpla? Are you buying a lot more figure standards and also building a lot more Kamen Rider or 30 MS sisters as well? We'd love to hear from you guys on what you think is the state of the Gunpla community. So what am I excited about for 2024? Well, frankly speaking, with the emphasis and focus on the Gundam Build Metaverse and also the Gundam Seed franchise, it's going to be looking as quite dull for the Plamo Gunpla community. I will actually be more excited and focus on the Kyokai Senki series, the Figura Standard Kamen Rider, and also the Ultraman 
from Bandai. I think those would be the ones that we are seeing a lot more traction and focus from the Bandai team. Unfortunately, Master Grade, you know, the amount of new releases is going to be so far and few releases in between. It's definitely not going to be an exciting year for 2024 so far. For me, well, I'm just glad that the Gunpla prices in Malaysia at least is still holding steady. Despite the high inflation of everything else in Malaysia, I can still count on Gunpla prices to be still reasonable with a slight uptake in pricing. But other than that, everything else is still quite reasonable for us to continue on for this particular hobby. So this is pretty much our retrospective look at GBWC 2023. Do you guys agree with our comments and the issues that we are seeing in GBWC? And do you agree as well in terms of my proposal for how we can improve for the competition. We'd love to hear from you guys on what you think. Unfortunately, 2023, as I mentioned, you know, we did not cover each individual country as detailed as what we want to because we felt that it was really hard to cover individual countries when it is so hard to even predict who is going to be the winner given that how the rules have started to change instead of looking at build quality, paint finishing overall and diorama. Now it is all about the idea and story. Can you create one amazing idea that's going to wow the judges? That is something that is new and I think builders need to start acknowledging that for 2024. Don't repeat the mistake and sink in hours and hours of a time building a big drama thinking that you could win because obviously the rules of the game has changed. I don't know why I'm keep repeating myself, but that is what I've already mentioned in my past video for GBLC 2022. So again, a big congratulations to every individual winner from Taiwan, mainland China and also Canada as well. I think it's pretty awesome that Canada finally has their own GBWC champion. Hopefully with that, we will see a growth in terms of the community in Canada as well. So hopefully we can see a lot more hobby stores, a lot more conversations, and hopefully Bandai can find a way to reduce the cost of shipping for the products so that it doesn't cost as much for you to actually buy Gunpla in Canada. So for those of you who are actually visiting Malaysia and you want to know where can you actually find and build Plumber Kids in Malaysia, do you know, drop us a message. We are more than happy to give you some of our recommendations, whether you are up north, central or down south. There are hobby stores everywhere in Malaysia. And I think that is one blessing that as Gunpla Builder and Collector myself, sometimes we kind of forget that actually we're quite lucky that there are a lot of plumber stores around in Malaysia. But unfortunately, there aren't a lot of stores that also provide you with the facility to do airbrushing, a mentor, someone to teach you how to do it properly as well. So hopefully that will slowly blossom and grow in the community. We did see some Gunpla stores closing you know, their business in 2023 as well. So that is quite unfortunate. But I think the rest are still holding on because frankly speaking, the demand is still there. There are always new entries and people coming into the hobby. So do be nice to them. And also, again, a big congratulations to the Open Category Champion from Canada. The build is really amazing. I think the overall story, the kit bashing as well, and the paint job is something that we have not seen for a long while. For a long while, we have not seen a winning entry that is not an actual Gundam mobile suit. So a big kudos to the winners, and hopefully you'll see some changes for GBLC 2024. Okay, a big shout out to Choco Falcon again for providing us with all these amazing shots and I'll meet up with you guys very soon in the next year. Till then, I'll see you guys down in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching.